After the conclusion of the group stage of the ongoing FIFA Women's World Cup that witnessed some riveting football, the stage is now all set for the knockout round among the 16 pre-quarter finalist nations. The experts have described women football this time as a breath of fresh air with improved level of competitiveness and energy, drawing more fans to the stadium and glued to television sets. Among the 16 nations, Japan and co-host Australia keep the Asian challenge alive as the pre-quarter final round kicks off from today. Good morning, I'm Sarah Sapsanama. Let's begin with the headlines of the hour. At least 13 Nepali nationals feared missing in a major landslide in Kedarnath in Uttarakhand state of India. Home Ministry writes to Foreign Affairs to coordinate in search operation. The Parliamentary Hearing Committee accused of ignoring serious complaints while endorsing the recommendations of the envoys. Questions raised over the validity of the committee itself. 283 people succumbed to dengue infection in Bangladesh since the start of the rainy season this year. Capital Dhaka worsted, over 37,000 infected undergoing treatment. And FIFA Women's World Cup braces for two pre quarterfinal matches today. Spain leads Switzerland 3 1 in the first pre quarterfinal. Japan clash against Norway later today. At least 13 Nepali nationals and six Indian citizens are reported missing in a devastating landslide that struck Kedarnath Gauri Kunda in the Indian state of Uttarakhand. Three hotels operated by Nepali nationals in Gauri Kunda, the entry point of Kedarnath, were swept away. The 13 missing include seven from Jumla Patarasi, three Jargaon, three from Patarasi 2, and three from Humla district. According to Ward Chairman Govinda Rao of Patarasi 3, the missing have been identified as 28-year-old Amar Bohra, his 26-year-old wife Anita, 14-year-old daughter Radhika, 8-year-old daughter Pinky, 7-year-old son Prithvi and other two sons Jatil and Wakil is 3, 6 and 3 years old. Likewise, Patarasi Rural Municipality Chair Purna Singh Bohra informed that 22-year-old Chandra Nepali and 55-year-old Dhanraj Burha, both from Patarasi 2, were also reported missing in the landslide. Indian media has reported that Sukharam Rawat of Patarasi 2, Humla's Bir Bahadur, his wife Sumitra and daughter Nisa have also been swept away by the landslide. In the meantime, the Home Ministry has corresponded with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to coordinate in the rescue efforts. The Home Ministry has cited a local online news portal, Hilbani, while asking for the coordination from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The government is all geared up to entrust the investigations into the 100 kilogram gold scam to Nepal police. The Prime Minister yesterday directed the police interference to probe the case, citing that there was possible involvement of an organized nexus. Prime Minister Nahal has directed to reach at the bottom of the gold smuggling case by intensifying the probe through police involvement. The probe so far has been carried out by the Department of Revenue investigation. Some 18 individuals, including three foreign nationals, have so far been arrested in connection with the gold smuggling. Despite the passing away of just over two weeks since the gold scam occurred on the night of 19th of July, the investigations have failed to trace the mastermind or the owner of the confiscated gold. The Prime Minister yesterday held a meeting with Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Defence Purna Bahadur Kharga, Deputy Prime Minister and Home Minister Naran Kazi Shrestha, Attorney General Dinmani Pokhril, IGP Basanta Bahadur Kuwar, CIB Chief Kiran Bajracharya and Director General of Revenue Investigation Department Nawaraz Dhungana to arrive at the decision of entrusting the investigation assignment to Nepal Police. During the interaction, it was discussed that the scam should not be just seen as inter-country smuggling, rather there could be involvement of some terrorist organizations. It has been speculated that the confiscated gold was smuggled by agents in Hong Kong, China and Dubai by making Nepal the transit point, while the gold destination could be Indian market. Following Prime Minister Dahal's directive, the Central Investigation Bureau of Nepal Police would handle the case, while Bureau Chief Kiran Bajracharya has said that the team of CIB would storm into action once it got hold of the necessary documents. Rights activists and victims of conflict era have staged a protest, saying the proposed amendment to laws related to transitional justice intended to grant impunity even in cases of serious violations of human rights. A sit-in protest was staged in front of the Kathmandu District Administration Office, saying the government's proposal to form a recommendation committee and special court was against the sentiments of the Constitution. Victims have called for the formation of a commission that would ensure their rights for truth and justice. 
The government has extended the deadline for Truth and Reconciliation Commission and the Commission of Investigation on Enforced Disappeared Persons without appointing officials to the commission. Central Committee members of Sipin Mao Center have demanded that leaders alleged of involvement in corruption scams should be suspended and action should be taken against them. In the ongoing Central Committee meeting in the Capitol's Academy Hall, the leaders presenting their views said that the names of Maoist leaders have been linked in corruption scandal and therefore such leaders needed to be suspended for an impartial investigation. Commenting on the political report presented by Maoist Chair Pushpa Kamal Dahal, the central members have flayed the modus operandi of the party leadership. They have alleged the leadership of not functioning as per the party's statute. They viewed that in the face of a series of corruption scandals, the public trust towards the government and the party was dwindling. The National Charter has the provision of parliamentary hearing to check the capability, expertise and honesty of individuals holding high-level public offices. This is considered a democratic practice to hold these office bearers accountable to executive. However, the work execution of such a hearing committee has now been limited to mere formality. On Thursday this week, the Parliamentary Hearing Committee endorsed the six recommended names as ambassadors without going through the rigorous hearing process. This has raised serious questions over the validity of the committee itself. The government on 11th July last month had recommended Lok Bahadur Thapa as the permanent representative to United Nations in New York, Sudhir Thapa as ambassador to France, Ram Prasad Subedi as ambassador to Switzerland, Tez Bahadur Chetri as envoy to the UAE, Kansham Lamsal to Kuwait and Dhan Bahadur Oli as envoy to Thailand. The meeting of the hearing committee held on 19th of July asked for complaints against the recommended names within 10 days. There were some serious complaints filed against some of the nominees. Tej Bahadur Chetri, who is recommended as the envoy to UAE, has been charged of not only being incapable for the position, Chetri has also been accused of sexual misconduct against female employees time and again. However, the committee has simply ignored these accusations while endorsing Chetri's recommendation. The committee members reportedly had even congratulated Chetri following his recommendation. Among the 15-member committee, only five were present on the day the names were endorsed, which also speaks volume about the lack of significance rendered to the committee by its members themselves. Prior to this, during the recommendation of outgoing Chief Justice Hare Krishna Karki as well, the hearing committee had ignored to probe complaints raised against him. Apart from the incident dating back to the year 2018, when the Parliamentary Hearing Committee had rejected the recommendation of Chief Justice nominee Deepak Raj Joshi, the committee has been found to endorse each and every government recommendation since then. Due to the lack of mandatory provisions in the constitution, Koshi Province Assembly has been without a speaker since Baburam Gautam resigned from the post this week to vote for the recently appointed Chief Minister Uddhav Thapa. Constitutional provisions require the appointment of Speaker and Deputy Speaker within 15 days of conclusion of election. In case of absence of any or both of the official, Assembly members can vote and choose the successors among themselves. However, a time frame for the election of Speaker or Deputy Speaker has not been determined by the Constitution. The Secretariat of Koshi Province Assembly has said it is preparing for the election of a Speaker following consultations with political parties. The election, however, is expected to be tricky, to say the least, considering the province assembly equation among parties. Former Speaker Baburam Gautam had resigned from the post to lend his vote to make it 47 for the ruling alliance to form the provincial government. Should the ruling alliance once again feel their candidate, the chief minister might not garner the majority votes to sustain his government. Opposition parties CPN Yamal and Rashtra Pazatandra party are also unwilling to take the post as it would solidify Thapa-led government. It has been understood that the ruling alliance has urged a Rashtra Pazatandra party to field their candidate for the post. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. The question is why has the responsibility to investigate the gold smuggling scam been given to Nepal police? Your options are A to make investigation effective, B to crack organized crime and C to save one's kith and kin. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Now, in our Public Voice segment, we have asked in several provinces why has the government remained indifferent in implementing the recommendations by Human Rights Commission. 
Let's take a look at what they had to say. So, the Rajya Sabha and Dwesi Unibo. Telegram there you need to say. This kind of garden, our mother unibo. That is the Rajya. As Nitik Dal ka manchi aru ne chhan unibo le say. Pachi garbai garda hari pani. This ma apu pani musin chaki bani door le say. Jo garbai no gari. Rajya Nitik Dal le apna kar karta aur ap hand lai bachau no kalagi yesto gare ko dekhin chha. Apne neta kar karta aru say. Dheri porni sambava na bago naale unibo le yubi se ma patak ke chasu diye ko chhai. Karya nuin gare pachi. Sarkar. पक्ष नहीं कमजोर देखिने उन्हें ले कुने न कुने पाल्टी बट शाम लगने होन्सा रा उसका नेता हरुले चाहे उन्हें जोगाउने को लगे उदासीन होन्सा राजनीति में यो भागबंडा को संस्कृति ले यो खाल को बात अपरंत सीज़न ना करी रहा कुछ आप हो बचना को लगे इसमें चासो न दिए को देखिन चा सरकार आप हो ले मा� अनि आप हो अप्ठेर में पढ़ चु बनी ही साबले आप हो ले किना अब तेज में सौ गरुस कारण अन गरुस सरकार गई गरुस जिम्मी बारियों कारण ले नो वर्क हम सब दोस्त की शर्म साधना रोज ना उन्हें अलग अपनी उही कथा करा उही खाल को कानून उन्हें बारे उन्हें अलग अपनी सुविधा उन्हें बाय ना राजनीति खिचता नहीं रहा राजनीति उन्मुक्ति को कारण लेकर रहा है मानव अधिकार उल्लंघन को घटना में चाहे तो कार्यकर्ता हों दाको समय में हो चाहे तो ने� Bangladesh witnessed a record number of deaths by dengue and infections for the second consecutive year. Hospitals in capital Dhaka struggled to make space for the high number of dengue patients. The mosquito burn disease is spreading rapidly through densely populated Bangladesh this rainy season. At least 283 affected people have died, more than half of them in the capital, Dhaka. More than 37,000 have become infected with the virus so far this year. In 2022, the virus had claimed 281 lives, a record high since the authorities started keeping a tally in 2000, and 62,423 people were infected. There is no vaccine or drug that specifically treats dengue, which is common in South Asia during the June to September monsoon season, as the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which spreads the disease, thrives in stagnant water. Experts have said that they expect to get more cases towards the end of the June to September monsoon season. Jailed Russian opposition politician Alexei Navalny has an extra 19 years in a maximum security penal colony added to his jail term in a criminal case which he said was designed to cow the Russian people into political submission. Navalny said in a statement on messaging platform X, formerly known as Twitter, that he was facing a life sentence behind bars unless the current authorities fell first. He said the sentence was intended to silence opposition and deprive Russians of a will to resist. United Nations Human Rights Chief Volker Turk has expressed serious concerns with the sentence and called for his release. The spokeswoman for Navalny said she feared he would be facing even tougher jail conditions. Speaking from an undisclosed location by video phone, Kira Yarmish said the extra time in a maximum security penal colony was politically motivated and intended to silence him and cow the Russian people into submission. India is experiencing uneven distribution of rainfall as a result of an erratic monsoon caused by El Nino, which has added to concerns about crop failure amid a rice export ban lately imposed by the government. Heavy rains in the north have flooded large swaths of farmland. In Noida, a city in northern India, thousands of hectares of paddy fields were damaged. The ready-to-harvest crops have been submerged in water for more than a week. It's a double whammy for farmers who borrowed money to invest on their farms. The damage to the crops has left them with huge debts to repay. Retail prices for rice climbed 3% after the rain damaged crops. To control prices and ensure availability of non-Basmati white rice domestically, the Indian government on July 20th banned the export of species of rice to boost domestic supply and keep retail prices under check. Against such a backdrop, the restrictions have pushed up rice prices globally. Where the forecasters say India is likely to receive below average rainfall in August, which could impact rice production. 
At least two people have died in Slovenia as torrential rains hit the northern and western regions of the country, disrupting traffic and causing blackouts, with helicopters evacuating people from some areas. Meteorologists say the heavy rains, which are expected to spread to neighboring Croatia and Bosnia further to the south, will last for the next 24 hours at least. Helicopters evacuated people trapped at their homes in the town of Skovja Loka, where vehicles and trucks were submerged or taken by torrents. Nearly all regional roads in the north were closed, as well as some railway lines. Some 16,000 households were left without electricity. That is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.